I spent 16 years with Yamaha, and uh, most of that time I was head of the music, audio, and uh, sporting goods division. Anything that didn't have an engine, I was responsible for. And uh, they, uh, CBS had been talking to me for a year, finally persuaded me that I should join them. Of course, they had Steinway and they had Fando, legendary company, as well as several other companies. So I was uh, tempted and I did it. it. Well, it was a very difficult time, major, major recession. And the, uh, the dollar had, be, had been pumped up very high against other currencies to overcome inflation here. But that meant that our export prices as a manufacturing company, you know, Steinway, Fender, and the others, our prices went sky high. In 1981, as I recall, the price of a Fender guitar in Germany, without us changing the export price at all, went up about 30% because the dollar had inflated so much against the, uh, the mark. So that was a very difficult time for, for us in many respects. Harold, I found, a, he was a handsome guy, um, uh, full of uh, charisma, I would say. Loved music, he played very well himself. And he and I got along, when I joined CBS, we got along very well for an odd reason. I was one of the only other keyboard players in the Fender, in the Fender location there in Fullerton. Everybody else played guitars and so forth. So uh, we were uh, a lonely couple of guys who liked p playing piano. And uh, uh, Harold was devoted to the, to, the, to the Rhodes piano. He wanted to make it absolutely as good as he possibly could. It frustrated the hell out of him that he couldn't get the resources out of Fender people or out of CBS to um, take the instrument to the point he knew or he felt it could be taken to. Whether it is 200-year-old technology or two-week-old technology, it doesn't make any difference. I mean, when all is said and done, a Steinway concert grand piano is still being made today, looks exactly the same as the concert grand piano of 100 years ago, so technologically, it's like mid-19th century. But it's a fabulous instrument, still played. So I think many people f didn't recognize that Rhodes had potentially a much longer life. It might not sell in the large quantities that it had before, but in smaller quantities, at a higher price, there were enough people who knew what Rhodes could do for them that no other instrument did in quite the same way that could have been a continuing life for Rhodes. But of course, then that was the time when CBS was trying to bail out of the musical instrument business and a number of other businesses that didn't relate to its uh, core businesses. Uh, they sold everything as a kind of going concern. Um, the new uh, ownership, with Bill Schultz had been president, I brought him with me from Yamaha, and he'd been running the Fender division, and he put together a group that bought the Fender company, but they, Bill felt that they didn't have the resources to really rebuild roads. Mm -hmm.